Hey, there's the music. That means it's time for Animal Talk. Some of the best doggone pet people on the planet helping you with your pet. One pooch at a time. It's America's Pet Show. Animal Talk. Thanks for being with us. Be, be sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment, do all those podcast things in all the podcast places. We truly appreciate you coming around. AnimalTalkRadio.com is the website. And, of course, WearingFunny.com if you're looking for some gear, some pet parent gear, some funny t-shirts. They're all there. They're available for you. Uh, appreciate our sponsor, WearingFunny.com. Great place. Go check them out. And for your pet help and information, you're in the right spot. We're going to help you out. We have years and years of animal calls and emails and interviews, and we're sharing them all you, with you on these Animal Talk Rewinds. Now, Animal Talk, it is for entertainment purposes only, so make sure you check with your local veterinarian, your local trainer, if you have any issues coming up. And we're here to help. Our, our professionals always got great ideas, too. So here we go, having a little bit of fun. It's Animal Talk. The man sitting across from me. I'm Dr. Brad Davis. I'm here to answer any veterinary questions you might have. And next to me. Donald Blummel, and I'm here to answer any training questions. Reflexes like cats we have today. And my name's <laughs> Jamie. Just going to make sure everybody has a good time. Give the, us a call. The coolest man in radio, if not the world. <laughs> Olympic cool. <laughs> it's not just cool, it's Olympic I cool. I am Olympic cool. <laughs> I can live with that. Olympic size cool. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. All right. Well, we're going to help you with your pet and we'll have a little bit of fun. Uh, we're going to play some games today. Uh, and you could win a very valuable um, Animal Talk t shirt. <laughs> it's very cool. It's, it's the fun of it. So uh, we can get into that right now. It's uh, one of my favorite things to do. It's a little game we like to call Fact or Fiction. Fact or Fiction. You decide. All right. Hey, Brad. How's this little uh, doodad work? Three facts, two fake, one true. And tell us on the air, which is the true fact. You win a fabulous prize. All right. Ladies first, Donna. Okay, fact one. Jaguar always have an even number of spots. Huh. That's crazy. <laughs> fact two, Brett? There are over 23,000 species of grasshopper. Oh, grasshopper. <laughs> <laughs> and the third, <laughs> the third fact is uh, at just under two feet, the Bodo is the smallest <laughs> of the ocean dolphins. The Bota. The Bota. 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 I don't Boto, B O T O, photo, photo, photo. All right, two of those facts absolutely false. One is true. You tell us a true one, and win a fabulous uh, prize today. It's an Animal Talk T-shirt. We'll, we'll send you a small if you want to put it on your dog. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I just love playing the games. It's Olympic size fun. <laughs> 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 and uh, we like to take your calls and your emails. Everything's Olympic size today. Uh, we take your emails uh, when you visit our, our website, our Olympic size website at uh, animaltalkradio.com. Send us emails from there. We should point out that last week for the Super Bowl, we were, we were right in Detroit right. covering the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And this week, the Olympics are in Turin, Italy. We're right in Detroit That's covering right. <laughs> covering the Olympics. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, but do we have an email out there? Sure do. All right. Dear Animal Talk. What's this, fan mail from a flounder? There it is. I'm going to have to get rid of my dog. Uh -uh. My children have been diagnosed with head lice, and the physician believes they got it from Scruffster. I'm worried about sending him to a new home. They might have kids, too. Should I just put him down? Put her down, I'm sorry. And this is signed, Elizabeth. All right, I, I'd be less worried about finding a new home for your dog and more interested in finding a new doctor for your children. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Exactly. In fact, we see this, we see this all the time. Dogs get blamed uh, for problems. For and... all sorts of crazy things that they have no... <laughs> I blame it on the dog all the time. <laughs> you don't even have a dog. I know. <laughs> it's the invisible dog <laughs> it's his invisible Ooh, gas dog, that dog. <laughs> Man. Woo. Oh, no. stop just stop <laughs> i'm 12 i'm sorry well i want to know <laughs> well uh. lice 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 yeah what you're talking about with that, those are those are not something that uh, dogs yeah. will give to people they're no. they're uh they're species specific you can get a transient infection but not a long-term infection if your kids go to school 
uh, chances are the lice they got was from the kids sitting next to them or, or something along that line. So if uh, this is something, though, you have to always um, ask about, ask your vet about, too, because um, it's amazing how many times I will hear from a physician that it's a dog's fault or the dog is the problem, yeah. and then it ends up people get rid of their dog, and it turns out the dog wasn't the problem. No, because the yeah. problem is still there after the pet yeah. goes uh, bye-bye. Uh, uh, oh, whoops. Oops. Yeah, come on. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And, and, and this uh, was one of the, I mean, when people would come in, I mean, you heard me do the sigh, because that's just, that's all I can do at that point is... It's the most, I, I'm very tired of people walking in when I was working at the clinics. People will come in and blame everything under the sun under the dog. You know, mm-hmm. well, the doctor said, well, you know what? No. And, and <laughs> Apparently your doctor isn't up on zoonotic diseases because this isn't one of them. <laughs> yeah. And the other, the other uh, thing we often <sighs> see is that people with sm- children and babies will get rid of their cats. Because right. the cats, as you know, cats will... Take away the soul smother of the baby. Them. Yeah, yeah, they'll 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 <laughs> climb in there and smother them. Yeah, yeah and and then, of course that's absurd. And uh, even a good friend of mine who's who's literally a genius. He's one of the, he's a top one of the top people in physics in the country. Right. Got rid of his cat when he first had a baby because he believed that he had heard that so many times he believed Whoa. it. There's no reason that you have to get rid of. No, your uh, no. there's no reason you have to get rid of your pets no. because you have children. You just no. need to find a way to coexist and also. You know, you're more like your kids are more likely to give uh, problems to your cat, your pets, than your pets yeah. are to your kids. Frankly, think about it. Who who causes you to lose more hair, your kids or your pets? <laughs> that makes more sense when you think about that. Way, <laughs> Absolutely. Get gray hairs. We got that factor fiction hanging out there. We have uh, who do we got? We got Mark in Nebraska. Mark, welcome to Animal Talk. Hey, how's it going? Excellent. You wanted to take a shot at this factor fiction? Yeah, I think the dolphin is the truth. Okay, we got the three facts. We're going to recap these real quick. Jaguar always have an even number of spots. 20,000 species, 23,000 species of grasshopper. And just under two feet, the Bodo is the smallest of all ocean dolphins. Mm, and you dolphin. think the dolphin one is true? Right. You get nothing. You lose. Oh, Good day, sir. oh mm. I'm so sorry, Mark. No, that's uh, that is to, a fake fact. So we're yeah. down to a 50-50. Hang up and call back. Thanks for calling. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> You want to get in on it? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's sort of like that uh, at the end of a concert. Just go off stage a little bit and then wait for them to call you back on stage for right. your encore. Yeah, it's yeah. like that. Sure. Mm-hmm. sure. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Down to a 50 50 for that one. We have Jerry uh, in uh, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania with a question. Jerry, we're going to come to you. Oh, the music's kicking in. So we got to grab a little break. And as soon as we get back from that, we're going to help you with your pet. Hey, it's Jamie. i got to hop on in here and remind you about our sponsor, WearingFunny.com. WearingFunny.com for all your pet parent t-shirt needs. Head on over to WearingFunny.com and check out the vast array of amazing, hilarious t-shirts. Thoughtful, cuddly, and cute for you and your kitties and your puppies. And hey, we take requests. If you have a critter that we don't have represented... Let us know. We'll get you connected with just the perfect shirt for you and your critters. Showing your love for being the best pet parent you can possibly be. Wearingfunny.com. Back to the show. And we're playing a game. We're in the midst Mm -hmm. of uh, the fact or fiction. We're down to a 50-50. Uh, one of these facts is true, one is false. Tell us the true fact. And you, uh, we got that Animal Talk t-shirt up for grabs. What are our two facts that remain. Fact one, Jaguar always have an even number of spots. And fact number two, there are over 23,000 species of grasshopper. Oh, grasshopper. <laughs> I just, it's, it's like a I know, you can't it's, 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 it's the same way. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, because if, if it doesn't it's get... Pa- it's so Pavlovian. It just, you know. <laughs> it's really sad, because if it doesn't get said, right. it plays in my head yeah, anyway. I, know, I, <laughs> I get the phrase, snatch the pebble from my hand. It just yeah. comes in my head right away. <laughs> 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 there you go. All right. Wow. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna help you with your read your fact again, there, Brad. <laughs> okay. There are over twenty three thousand species of grasshoppers. <laughs> all right. That's I just all right. I should have been ready with that one earlier. <laughs> uh, so one of those facts is true. One is false. And and uh, you let us know the true fact, and you win a fabulous prize. Brad, we got an email. Sure do. Loitering over there. Or what sure do you do. got? Dear Animal Talk. What's this? Fan mail from a flounder. My uh, neighbor has a pet praying mantis. 
I don't know if that's a good thing or not. He caught it in the yard a few weeks ago and has kept it ever since. I think it should be free, especially since I don't know if he knows what he's doing taking care of it. Yeah. What do you think? And this is signed, uh, well, it's Bob from Los Angeles. Let him go. Let no. my people go. Yeah, no, there's there's no need to keep a praying mantis, really. There's there's not. And, and uh, there's quite... <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> um, I the way I look at it is there's there's not enough of them left. You know, I used to see praying mantis all over the place when I was a kid, and now I don't see them anymore. Mm-hmm. So you know, if if they're out there, let them be out there. Mm-hmm. Just let them go. There's there's no need to keep them. They are cool bugs and everything, but they'll do better on their own. They yeah. know what they're doing. This is what they've done forever. They, they it's, it's all instinctual. Let them, let them live their life as they should. It also, also reminds me of, and again, I'm not putting down someone's hobby. Maybe someone can explain it to me, but it's the butterfly collectors who see these beautiful butterflies, and they think, this is lovely. What a beautiful thing in nature this is. Let's so catch it, kill it, and pin it. And <laughs> put it on a pin, yeah. <laughs> I don't get that either. But It's a butterfly well, on a it, stick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so not right. It's a butterfly sickle. <laughs> yeah, no, there's. I mean, they do. They do learn things. The entomologists learn things uh-huh. from there. You know, that uh-huh. that's part of what they're doing is is learning about these species of <laughs> bugs. But really, you have no a thousand times over. A pin's killed them. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but there's 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 no need to, for the average person unless you're into something like mm-hmm. this, you know, collecting butterflies. Why why keep it? You know, I mean, it's it's got a job to do, and I, I guarantee you, it'll be much better in your garden. It will get rid of all of those stinging Asian beetles. It will oh. eat. I know, aren't those horrible? Hate them. It will it will keep down the mosquito population. I mean, they eat other bugs, so you know, please let it let it do its job in your garden. That's right. where they belong. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have that fact or fiction hanging out there. We have Ed in Nebraska who wanted to take a shot at it. Ed, welcome to Animal Talk. Thank you. All right, so we got the two facts. We're going to recap those for you. Fact one, jaguar always have an even number of spots. In fact number two, there are over 23,000 species of grasshopper. Okay, Ed, which is the uh, true fact? I think it's a jaguar. The jaguar. You get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. Oh, I'm right, sorry you. about that, but thanks for the call, Ed. Thank you, Bob. Uh, all right, so <laughs> in uh, reality, how that works out was uh, the true fact was what? 23,000 species of grasshopper. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I just had to do that one last time. <laughs> I'm so easily entertained. It's sad when the sound effects was, are the best part, right? Yeah, just yeah, once, I like you better than the yeah, sound yeah, effects. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but you were you. Bat Brad was victorious. It's kind of mm-hmm. it's a point of pride because Brad writes the fake facts and, mm-hmm. and uh, looks up the real facts and and compiles these for us to read. And it's a point of pride for him to uh, stump our audience and and to uh, put one over on you guys. And mm-hmm. he was he was able to accomplish that today. So and, and also my goal is that that, that every, all across the country tomorrow, everybody's going to be talking about jaguars having an even number of spots. Right, 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 right. <laughs> one of the fake facts will be taken as true, and it'll Bravo. become a rumor. Bravo. Um, so you can see one of your rumors end up on Snopes? Yeah. Yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, we're going to help you with your pet when you give us a call now. Brad, you got another one there? Sure do. Dear Animal Talk. Uh, where is it? You are having new mail in your inbox. There it is. <laughs> My dog licks and licks and licks and licks. The wood floor is always slippery. He seems happy otherwise, but his tongue is like a snake's tongue. Can you help me get him better? And this is signed Roger. Hmm. Yeah, a little obsessive compulsive behavior going on with this dog. This dog has created a habit. It may have started because there was something good on the floor at one point, and now it's turned into a way to release any any type of anxiety or nervous energy or just energy in general. Um, this, if you want to break the habit, you have to be there every moment watching the dog and the very first lick of the ground, you have to be there to make a correction. And a correction is, is not, you know, 
you're not always a part of it. We prefer it to be more of a hidden correction where a scary noise will happen, like a book will fall on the floor, um, you know, shaker can, a pop can, they put nickels or pennies in, duct tape it shut, throw it at the ground. You're not the correction. The behavior becomes the correction. Mm. Once you've corrected it and they stop the licking of the floor and they're looking around like, hey, what's going on? Uh-huh. You can now redirect them into something that's more positive, more appropriate, something, get them chewing on a bone, um, you know, any anything really. Anything is better than you know, allowing this behavior to continue. Give the dog a different outlet for that energy. Um, if this dog doesn't get a lot of activity during the day, increase his amount of activity that you get him. Get him out for a walk, play ball in the yard, do something to alleviate some of that anxiety or that excess energy that's built up. Um, this is pretty common for small breeds of dogs or young breeds of dogs. I was listening to the small breed. Um, young dogs, old dogs. If this is a habit, it usually starts in puppyhood as a nervous outlet. And now it's turned into a habit, so break the cycle. And there are drugs you can use, but really behavior is the way to go. Behavior uh, mm-hmm. modification is the way Sometimes to go. Sometimes you need to use the drugs to get that behavior modification. So. On the dog. Yep. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Veterinarian approved there you drugs. Go. <laughs> All right. Your call's next. We're going to get to Dave in just a second. We're going to have a little fun along the way. Um, we lost Dave, so Dave, you got that question. You can come on back. You're more than welcome. And uh, you and your calls. And, and uh, like I said, fun. Where's my fun? I had fun right in here someplace. <laughs> Where is it? There's the fun button right there. <laughs> Lost for years here. It's a two-for-one sale today. Woo. It's time yeah. for the bad <laughs> animal joke of the week. Who's bad? bad? All right. I was just feeling it because there was another one that I really liked here. Uh, bad animal joke, you can send them in, jamie at animaltalkradio.com. But Brad, yeah, what do cats eat for breakfast? I don't know, Jamie, what do cats eat for breakfast? Mice Krispies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bad animal joke of the week. I just I just love the I love the bad animal jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, it's, you know. Oh, what are you going to do? What were you doing? I'm just saying a little seltzer bottle pie in the face sort of thing. Yeah, oh. it's funny stuff. But, uh, hey, we also, the Three Stooges were popular for how long? They they still are. Coincidence? It's, there are three of us. Ooh. Oh, great. We know who's <laughs> Mo. What do you want to be, Jimmy? <laughs> 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 yeah. She just bonked me in the head. <laughs> Mercy. <laughs> All right, uh, we're helping you with your pet, and uh, I love the three stooges. Brad has wandered over to the oh, news boy. nook. Uh, your radio tabloid news source: <laughs> the National Animal. Okay, and what is happening in the news, Doctor Brad? We have three of the most disturbing stories. Oh my! I've ever read. Okay, man jailed after biting head off gecko. A 19-year-old man was behind bars Tuesday after allegedly biting the head off a gecko as part of a bat. Derek Ford was being held in Orange County, California jail after being charged with felony animal cruelty. Ford was at a friend's home Sunday when someone bet him $10 that he couldn't bite the head off a gecko. Although Ford won the bet, it wasn't long before police showed up and placed him under arrest. He was charged with violating parole and facing further court action. Medical care for the gecko was unavailable as he ironically didn't have any insurance. (laughs) I knew there was an insurance joke coming. That's a good one. Wow. All right. That's, that's like the worst thing I've ever made a joke about. <laughs> wow. Well, that I read on here. Okay. Marriage to Dolphin, odd but true. You wonder how Sharon Tendler told her relatives of her nuptials in December with Cindy, her boy toy dolphin she met 15 years ago while vacationing in Israel. While well, the story of a rich Londoner marrying a dolphin sounds fishy, it's apparently true. The media was abuzz when Tendler took the plunge and exchanged vows with Cindy in the waters of the groom's home. The wait, port- wait, it's, it's a male dolphin? No, it's a male dolphin named Cindy. The, uh, you found the oddest part that the dolphin's name was Cindy. Okay. <laughs> That's a, no, it is a, it is a male dolphin. Okay, named no, Cindy. I just wanted to clarify. Mm-hmm. Okay. The reports say that when she met Cindy 15 years ago, the connection sparked, and she began visiting him at the resort several times a year. The bride wore a white dress to the dock during the ceremony at Dolphin Reef. She became the first person in the world to marry a dolphin, though many of many of us doubt the union is legal. She bent on one knee, her hair framed in a veil and pink flowers, and gave Cindy a kiss and a nice piece of mackerel. Her mother was relieved when she found out it was an actual dolphin. As she was first concerned, it was Miami running back Ricky Williams. 
If you knew Ricky Williams, that's really funny. Football fans are laughing. It's time to talk about limits. You can love your pets, <laughs> but just don't love your pets. You know what I mean? Repeat after me. Us, them. Us, them. Us, them. All right. Great move. Yeah. <laughs> okay, if that didn't work, this has no hope. But what the I, heck? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not a football well, yeah, fan. Yeah, so. I was like, if you said, you know, who's like uh, the Marino? Isn't he like a dolphin? Yeah, but he was. He, yeah, there, there's, there's Mom would be it. happy if she. Married. Yeah, she would be happy if it was Dan Marino, sure. but not so much Ricky Williams. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll have to take your word right. for it. Snake befriends snack hamster. <laughs> Aochin the snake well. <laughs> seems to enjoy being with Gohan the hamster. The rodent eating snake and hamster have developed an unusual bond at a zoo in the Japanese capital. The relationship began in October last year when zookeepers presented the hamster to the snake as a meal. The rat snake, however, refused to eat the rodent. The two now share a cage, and the hamster sometimes falls asleep sitting on top of his natural foe. I've never seen anything like it, said a zookeeper. The hamster was initially offered uh, to this two year old rat snake because he was refusing to eat frozen mice. Uh, as a joke, the zookeeper named the hamster Gohan, the Japanese word for meal. Apparently, the snake lost interest in eating the hamster after the hamster said that he used to belong to Richard Gere. Wow. Hey. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> You're right. Those are three of the most disturbing stories you've had in a long time. Thank you. And help you with your pet. And the problem is there's nobody really to help us. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the problem right there. Dear Animal Talk. Congratulations, Skippy. You've got mail. I see the Curious George movie coming out. Oh, yeah. And I was thinking of getting a monkey as a pet. Is that a good idea? I'd like to have in a pet that's a little bit unusual. I was also thinking about a chicken. Which would you recommend? And this is signed, Roger. I don't even know I, I don't even know where to begin with this one. His choice that he's giving is monkey or chicken. <laughs> Which actually, like, oddly, the last flight I was on. <laughs> just, just right out of Bangkok? Where were you flying out of? <laughs> Seriously. Um, no. Is he Monkeys. watching too many episodes of Friends? What is this guy? What is this person's deal? <laughs> <laughs> Something. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. No, monkeys do not. Do not. The Friends make. Marathon on or something? What is this guy's deal? <laughs> monkeys do not make good pets. They just don't. This they, is a good song, though. All right, write a song about a chimp, okay? That's Do not right. get one as a pet. No, no. What do you call them? What? what oh, they're Rottweilers monkeys? with hands. There you go. I think I think that is honestly the the best description I've ever heard <laughs> they, of a monkey. They have huge teeth. <laughs> they carry they carry some certain slight diseases like I don't know AIDS. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> you know, tuberculosis. Well, Other than that, no problem. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Get three. <laughs> And, and and something when it gets mad, it throws excrement at you. All right. You know, no, <laughs> no. Why would you want that in your house? Just no. get married. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, Holy I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Of course. Oh, hey, uh, welcome to our Valentine's Day show. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we're no. glad you're around. <laughs> <laughs> so no, you no. monkeys, so... monkeys are a bad choice. Chickens are a much worse choice than thing. I know people who buy chickens and try to keep them, but they're just not a good choice well, as a rule. Well, if, you, if you got a few acres if, and they're out there scratching around in the barn, right? If you have, excellent. If you have the proper facility for them, apartment in Manhattan, not, not a good idea. No, no, <laughs> no, not if you're running down to the Central Perk <laughs> every day. You don't want to. You don't want to leave the chicken alone. <laughs> the Central Perk was the coffee house. The friends. Oh, I never about. watched. And we have Dave. Dave, welcome to Animal Talk. Hi, uh, my wife and I really enjoy your show. And uh, thank you. Calling. Uh, about a dog that my son owns. He lives in another state. Uh huh. And we we believe the dog is a Jack Russell Terrier with some possibly uh, Australian Shepherd. Okay, so he's an all American mix, but some Jack Russell yeah, in him. Cool. But a lot. The face looks a lot like a Jack Russell. All right. He's got a real gentle personality. The only problem is he does seem to have a mind of his own sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. uh, I was wondering if that's just a characteristic of a Jack Russell Terrier. Yes. Yeah. They okay. they are see what you've got if this is an Australian and Jack mix. Those are you, two very smart dogs. Scary smart dogs, yes. Yeah. Yes. You've got you've got high energy, intelligent mm -hmm. 
needs a job kind of dog. <laughs> I mean, really, these these dogs live to work. They do, and and you've got to give them. Both breeds of dogs need a job, so give them something to do, even if it's a, most people. If you've seen. Um, any of the, you know, if you have an agility group nearby, you may even want to just bring them out there um, to give them something to do. Fly ball is something very common for Jack Russells to be a right. part of and Aussies to be a part of. One of the doctors I worked for owned both and did fly ball with them. Um, fly ball? So, yeah, it's, it's called, called fly ball. Yeah, it's, it's, a, uh, they, it's like a sprint. It's yeah, like an all-out sprint, and they run, and there's a box, and they they oh. do like three la- three uh, up and downs to this box, and they hit they hit a they hit a hit the box, and and it releases a ball, and they oh. have to bring the ball back. It's it's a it's a it's a relay with the dog, yeah. and, and it's just lightning fast when you get yeah. these little pups running. And there. these and and it's something it gives them something to do. They love doing it, and they're good at it. Um, you may even want to see if you've got uh, amateur fly ball group that's you know nearby or even getting them in if you have a dog park nearby taking them out give them something to do and try to schedule whatever that is to be at the exact same time every day but most importantly give them something to do these dogs Great definitely advice. need jobs can i ask you one other question about sure. it? it seems to uh, shed quite a bit and what's what's a good way to to uh, help with the shedding problem but you know uh, other than you just Cut the hair out or something, or well, what? I, I mean, you know, uh, brushing and grooming and, and, and <coughs> constant <coughs> grooming helps, uh, but they shed. Dog shed. Well, every year, uh, every year, and it was sort of a running gag. I enjoyed this. Every year on the show, we would have someone who invented a cure for shedding. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> every year, and, and and it was it was just great because I loved when people cure something that's normal. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. A, and and you pretty much have to shed. We shed. Um, uh, yeah. the, the brush your hair, you see, but the, yeah, the point, the brush point, it out. Yeah, yeah, just brush it out. You got it. You got to do that. Get what's called. A, there's something called a slicker brush. Okay. It's uh, it's it's what it is. It's sort of a square thing with little wire, uh, little bitty piece, little wire that's sort of angled, and it pulls the hair out really nicely. Um, that that works. And there's also something called a shedding blade, and that but really you, yanks the hair out of there. You use not, a slicker. If, excuse me. If you use a slicker brush, should the hair be wet or dry? I always a dry would probably be better. Yeah. Dry be better because then it wouldn't mat up as much. But uh, okay. and generally they like it. They love the way it feels. It's, it's giving them a good scritching while you're doing it. So yeah, I think that that would be a good choice for you. But yeah, you can't really stop the shedding. Um, it's, it's something you have to just sort of live with. But the more grooming you do, the less shedding there'll be. And may I ask one? What was the name of the uh, the job or the game that you were suggesting earlier? Fly ball. This fly F-L-Y. ball. Yeah. Okay. Just fly. Fly ball. Yeah. Oh. Tremendous advice. Thank you very much. Well, th- th- thanks so much for the call. We appreciate it. You know, yeah. There's no more Jack Russells, right? Oh, they're not. Parsons Rus- uh, Parson Parson Russell. Parsons Russell. Oh, really? They've changed the changed the, the name. Ch- was isn't Westminster today? No, no. All right. No, no. Monday or Tuesday. Westminster's yeah. coming up. Is it's it? this yeah. week. Westminster's yeah. mm-hmm. this week, though. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. right. Sometime this week. Yeah. yeah. I don't know when. Yeah. I- don't watch that kind of stuff. Yeah. Their opening ceremonies will be incredible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> will there They'll be, be dancing cows. Will there be dancing cows in the opening ceremonies for Westminster. No, you know what it'll be is it'll be a presentation of all of the herding breeds herding the cows. Oh, see, now that would be fantastic. <laughs> Much better than the dancing cows with the I'm still, fire helmets. I'm and... still troubled by the opening ceremonies of the Olympics. I'm bothered by this. <laughs> Do you think... I think the announcers for the uh, for the Westminster show are practicing saying stupid things now so they'll be ready when the I, show I, starts. I think so. <laughs> this one has four legs, too. That's right. <laughs> A lot of that. But anyway, I'm All going right. on. And, uh, Brad, did you have another email? Sure do. Over there? What sure do. You, do. Do your animal talk. Congratulations, Skippy. You've got mail. I'm, I want to get a breed of dog that's different. What breed of dog would you suggest that I look into that not everyone has? What I mean is I don't want a Golden Retriever or a Labrador. I want to get something that's unusual but still would be a good dog. Thanks for your help. This is signed, Benny. All right. How about a mutt? Hey, not every not everybody has one of those. And and see if if you go to the to the and, pound, and you can come up with some ridiculous name for it. Oh sure. Like a what did my sister bought just bought a what a, a cho- chi a. Pika Pico Wawa or something, something Pico like Wawa. Pico which Wawa. I believe also that's the place where Dirty Dancing took place. Yeah. Pika Wawa <laughs> <laughs> on the shores of Gitchigumi. Yeah, yeah, okay, near, near Pika Wawa <laughs> <laughs> on the shores of Gitchigumi. All right, uh, yeah, I think that's right. 
But so, oh, um, wow. But, but, uh, the Catahoula, what's that kind of dog again? Catahoula? Yeah, those are it's, cool. Yeah, that's they're they're very good dogs. Yeah, they're they're a dog that needs a job though. But they're yeah. but they're dogs yeah. but they're dogs that need homes the, the pound and also oh, sure. watch watch the dog show. That's a good yes. place to pick yeah, them up too. Westminster oh, yeah. this week, yep. great place to do a little window shopping for mm-hmm. a pup. We are gonna help you with your pet and uh, we help you by answering your email questions that you send to us throughout the week. And uh, you have one there, Brad? Sure do. Dear Animal Talk. Let me bring in your mail. I was going to get a Valentine's Day gift for my dog. Do you have a suggestion? And do you guys get Valentine's Day gifts for your pets? Oh. And this is signed Billy. Lord, I, no. I just got my <laughs> my dogs just got their present delivered the other day. <laughs> and what would that be? Um, I ordered them some special shampoo. Oh, okay. There and you go. Yeah, it's it's something for all of us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they don't smell like a dog uh, anymore. It'll make everybody happy. But yeah, it's I got them a really nice little, and a, they came with a little rubber ducky, so my dog's got a little toy too. Oh. And a soap, uh, soap on a rope for a dog, but it's in the shape of a bone. It's really cute. Okay. So that was that was their little gift. Yes, I, I buy presents for my pets. Oh. And you don't, you don't get uh, for Valentine's Day. Yeah. No. Christmas. Oh yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. You do get Christmas. We'll do Christmas, but not uh, the Valentine's Day. <laughs> I'm not Scrooge, <laughs> but I'm not an idiot either. Well, what do you not th- that you know. Okay, no, that was <laughs> that was so cold. Oh, um, that was ill phrased. Um, <laughs> yeah, she won't notice. Anyway, the, the, what the, what would you suggest for the to, for this uh, for this no. man? What do you think, just for for this well, person? what's it? But what's what's a fun treat for a dog? I mean, oh, you uh, can find all kinds of stuff out there. They have gourmet cookies that are you know made with with frosting that's safe for dogs. Oh, Everything yeah. is. Oh, you can find them in pet stores. They, my my coworker actually bought my dogs a gift too, which was really sweet of her. She went to this little puppy uh, boutique and she came home with Italian. Uh, what was it? Italian Greyhound pizza. And it, it was just like a. A little pizza for it's a dog treat, but ah, they call okay. it Italian Greyhound, and she owns an Italian okay. Greyhound, right. so right. she okay. had to buy that. But she got she got my dogs because um, I didn't know Italian Greyhounds were good eating. <laughs> no, no, oh, there's, there's like no of... meat on them. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> no, they're skinny little things. <laughs> right, right. Um, no, but but they they have really great gourmet dog treats out there. Homemade dog treats. You can find this stuff in most pet stores. Yeah. Um, well, and there's like that a franchise of of dog bakeries out there oh, now yeah. that uh, oh, yeah. go up in a lot of major cities that mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. there's actually these dog bakeries you go in and all of it, it looks like you know it looks like people food yeah and mm-hmm. it, but yeah. it's all for the pooches yeah they've got some great great stuff out there if you want to get them something get them something that is totally made 100 percent for the dog yes you know don't don't yes. go out and get the chocolate heart box of candy and you're fluffy, mm-hmm. you know. No, not a good idea. But unless, they, unless, of course, you're trying to keep your vet in business. <laughs> <laughs> right, and you yeah. don't really like the dog. <laughs> yeah. um, then, by all means. Or your carpet. If you don't like your carpet, that works too. <laughs> yes. Or time. Time is always a great gift for the dog. Time. Oh. Always a great gift. And it's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, hey, another uh, another week in the bag. So, uh, appreciate everybody hanging out with us and uh, spending uh, part of your weekend uh, with the Animal Talk crew. Uh, enjoy having you around. Brad, Donna, Jamie, everybody at GCN, thanks for keeping us on the air. And everybody, please have an exotic week. And kiss. you wild thing for me. Thanks for being with us for another episode of Animal Talk. Make sure you do all those podcast things in the podcast places. Like, subscribe, leave a comment. We hope you had a little fun along the way. Make sure you head on over to wearingfunny.com. You can grab yourself some gear to show off what a proud pet parent you are. Are you a cool cat mom? Are you a happy doggy daddy? We got all the gear just for you. Hats, shirts, all kinds of swag. Wearingfunny.com. Go check it out and show yourself a little animal pride with Animal Talk. Once again, like, subscribe, leave a comment. Thank you so much for being here. Have an exotic week. and Kiss your wild thing for us. Bye-bye, boys. Have fun storming the castle. Thank you, the lake. It would take a miracle. Bye-bye.